what would you say uh, are the biggest obstacles for machine learning models to perform well in the market and the biggest contributing factors to good performing models if you could go back in time now this is very interesting if you go back in time and coach yourself when you just started with machine learning what are the five points you could tell the younger doc chen <laughs> what would your advice be some to someone who is new in ml and has no university mathematics computers or science background now these are so many questions five points dr chen from your end mm -hmm. i think that um the biggest uh, uh, obstacle for machine learning uh, model to perform well in live trading is uh, data snooping bias uh, and uh, regime change. Uh, data snooping bias uh, actually has a name in machine learning. It is called uh, the, the bias versus variance uh, problem. Oftentimes, you train a model um, very well, you know, and it achieves a very high accuracy in the training set and it completely fall apart in the test set because it was um, uh, there are too many parameters and they were overfitted uh, to uh, the noise of the training data rather than to features that are really uh, uh, repeatable. So there are many ways to overcome data snooping bias but um, ultimately um, it is uh, it is an ever-present danger because uh, um, you know there are just a lot many a lot more parameters to fit in machine learning than in traditional quantitative training models the second part of the uh, obstacle is the non stationarity of data and some people might call it regime shift um, all machine learning model uh, depends on the fact that the market uh, is the same at uh, all times uh, it's um, uh, it's it's assuming that uh, uh, you know the 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 statistical characteristics of the of the time series uh, uh, are are constant, uh, but that is oftentimes not true for uh, for many financial time series. You know, market uh, undergoes uh, major re uh, 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 changes over time. For example before and after uh, 2008 uh, many characteristics have, dip, uh, have 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 changed for example the volatility structure of the market in uh, before 2008 the volatility of the us index uh, equity index is such that it has higher volatility but less volatility of volatility the, the, the tail uh, uh, are not as thick but after the financial crisis, because of quantitative easing and this, you know, almost zero interest rate, uh, most of the time for it is very low, uh, but uh, the uh, tail are significant. They are flash crash and they are sudden crash in the market and so forth. So a machine learning model um, that are trained on pre-financial crisis data would not work at all, uh, would not work well uh, in the post-crisis era. Uh, but you know, how do you tell um, that there is regime shift? It's not. It's particularly challenging for machine learning because it doesn't have the context. You know, we human know that there was a big financial crisis happened, and you know, all the regulatory changes has happened, and the, uh, the federal interest bank, uh, the Fed's interest rate policy has changed, and so forth. But the machine learning model doesn't know that because you cannot tra train it that way because this thing happened once in a few decades. How can you change the model to recognize this? So this context is what um, the human mind can grasp, which a machine learning model cannot grasp. So um, there's, this is, I think, the, you know, perhaps even more problematic than data snooping. With data snooping bias, we have standard procedure to deal with it in machine learning, and it happens not just in finance, but in many other uh, data set as well. But Regime shift is a non-stationarity is a unique problem in finance, and that is a problem that um, um, you know that it would be very hard for a machine learning model to overcome without some domain knowledge, without some guidance. So, and guidance that from from the modeler might be 
to make sure that you restrict the training data uh, to the regime that you believe it is continuing and not to train it on you know just the maximum amount of data but only restricted it to data that are within the current regime um, so and in fact uh, data snooping bias is the one thing that I wish I had been more um, aware of when I was uh, starting to apply machine learning to um, finance because at that time it seemed so easy you know you run any number of uh, this in tree and it come up with rules and it works great in the uh, in the back test, right, and 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 you get so excited, but none of these uh, actually work in live trading. That's why um, you know I had for a long period of time uh, suspended my machine learning effort and focus on uh, creating simple trading models that does not use so many features. And uh, you know that that's the the result. Uh, that 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 I think is the main uh, the main uh, thing that I should I would have to I would have to redo. Uh, you know, is, is to overcome the the data snooping bias. And so uh, for someone who does not have a background in mathematics, computer science, uh, and you want to go into machine learning, uh, it's not uh, too you know impossible. Um, you know, you don't have to really learn a lot of mathematics to do that, and you don't really have to know anything about co theoretical computer science to do that, but you do need to, as I mentioned before, get comfortable with coding. And it's a very practical technique, so it doesn't require any uh, formal education. It's, uh, you know, many people are able to learn coding uh, with none of these academic backgrounds. It is just a, you know, it, it's a very practical endeavor. Um, and uh, there's nothing beats actually, you know, trying it and, and pra keep practicing it. So I don't think that, uh, uh, you know, you would need a theoretical academic background to get into this, uh, using this tool. Yes, that is correct. So like, thanks a tons, uh, Dr. Chan for sharing like years of learnings and experience that you uh, just shared like, and uh, this probably be the, uh, some sort of shortcut for, uh, the aspiring ones hearing you right here, right now. Uh, thanks for that.